soundtrack anyway. And uh, it's from 1986 from Volcano Records, uh, the same company that uh, did the Eddie and the Cruisers stuff, which is pretty cool. That's one one reason why uh, John Cafferty did the, the voice or did the uh, song uh, Voice of America Sons as one of the themes for the movie Cobra because it was right after or in between the uh, Rocky IV and uh, he did the uh, music for or he did the song Hearts on Fire for for the movie Rocky IV which also starred Sylvester Stallone so that's one of the things I got I can't wait to listen to it it's like the summer of Christmas continues here at the Slauson house here and the other thing that I got well actually I'll show you the thing that you know that I got made fun of first uh, I got it because it was it has an all-star cast and there's people in here like John Candy Chevy Chase let's see who else uh, who else there's, there's a few others here yeah John Candy Sandra Bernard, John Candy, Terry Chase, Joe Flaherty, Waylon Jennings, Dave Thomas, I think it's Dave Thomas from uh, Strange Brew, and just an all-star cast. And what am I talking about? You probably know already, but the first ever Sesame Street movie ever came out, and this is the 25th anniversary, I believe, anyway, uh, and it's Follow That Bird, and... I have not. I had it once on, on DVD before on the old snap case, but I don't know what happened to it. I probably sold it or something. But this one has a lot more content, and, and you know, it has like a new interview with Carol Spinney, the guy who performed as Big Bird, and also has like jumped to a song and all that and the sing along. And, and see, the thing about it is like, I love Sesame Street, but I love old school Sesame Street, and this is pretty old school because they picked the year. What year did they do this at? I believe it was 1985, yeah. They picked 1985 to be the year to make the first Sesame Street movie. They've been around, by that time, they've been around about 15 years, maybe? 16? Is that they start in 1969? Was that about right, or 70? I don't really remember. You guys can tell me what, what, when Sesame Street first started. But, uh, yeah, follow that bird. You know, I'm sure you guys remember it. And if you guys have this in your collection, do you ever get made fun of? I mean, I have a lot of animation in my collection, you know, it's, but I never, hardly ever get made fun of from that. But I'm sure because it's Sesame Street. Oh, oh, a grown man, you know, watching Sesame Street. Well, I'm not, I don't watch Sesame Street. I mean, I, I did when I was a kid, and this one was one of the movies. I was two years old when this came out, so it's part of my youth. That's why I got it. So anyway, which leads me to my final uh, Amazon uh, DVD that I got, uh, a rare film that uh, I can't, that I saw a little bit, somebody put it on YouTube, I saw a little bit of it, but I want to wait till I get the DVD of it, this is the first ever Flintstone full-length movie, <clears throat> and it's simply called, and the, well it's the original 1966 theatrical release of A Man Called Flintstone, and I got it because I like a lot of rare stuff like this, I don't have any Flintstones in my collection, but I do have the Jetsons movie. But I hardly have any, like, Hanna-Barbera related cartoons in my collection, like Scooby-Doo or, or the Jet, you know, Jetsons First Seasons or whatever, uh, you know, or any stuff like that. But I love Flintstones, and this is, like, the first movie that ever, like, kind of started the ball. Uh, I have never seen this movie, so I'm not going to tell you much about it because I don't want to spoil it or give it away because I haven't seen it yet. But if you've ever seen this one, let me know what you think about it, you know, if you've seen it. You know, I'm sure there's a few true movie buffs out there that call themselves movie buffs that have seen this. So, uh, yeah. And the color on a high-def TV, it's just superb. Perfect. You can't get any better than that. Trust me. All right. And the final last package of my order as we continue the video here. And uh, I'll show you guys here. Oh, it's actually light. It's actually lighter than I thought it because of how big uh, this box is. I thought it was going to be, uh, you know, heavier. But uh, if you guys know, I'm going to tell you who I got it from. I'm just not going to show the address. But if you guys know, uh, any of you Cool Duder fans out there, know that uh, recently Sean Phillips and MJ Kelly, well, actually, Sean Phillips and his family are all moved to California. Right now his family's all in California, including Dweebo and all that, and uh, San Diego. And they're moving, I think his parents got a new job or something like that, or I think, probably his dad more likely, 
I don't know the whole story, so I, you know, whatever, I guess. But, you know, okay. <laughs> anyway, so his family is moved to California, from Dallas, Maryland, all the way to San Diego, California. It's a big jump, right? Well, Sean Phillips will be moving as well. Uh, in fact, I think this Monday uh, starts the journey. He and MJ Kelly are going to be going to uh, going to California. They're going to make this big, huge, you know, around the country movie. Which, when it comes out, I definitely want to get it because I think it's a good idea. Those guys decided to do something like this, you know, because they are very talented. Everybody knows Cool Nooner. You know, that's one reason why I I went on YouTube in the first place. You know, because of him. Because of Sean Phillips and Dick Kelly, they love for the '80s and the '90s. But so for you guys who aren't f familiar with those guys, they're YouTube.com/slash/CoolDuder. Anyway, so long story short, while Sean has the money to go to the California, well, MJ kind of doesn't, and which it's hard to believe because they're both actors and. I figured he'd have some type of money, but he's been sell MJ has been selling some of his rare items on eBay, and I actually got a chance to pick up a couple, which is kind of cool because you know, I mean, it's just something that he's owned, and now it's something that I own, and it, it, I didn't have to pay that much for it. I think the total amount that I paid was twenty two dollars, so it's twenty two dollars. You know, I gave him for his trip, you know, and I'm happy to say that I'm one of the people responsible for him going to California, you know. I, you know, he deserves it, and I hope he has a good time. Whatever he does with the money. Even if he buys some strippers, goes to the strip club, it doesn't matter. Whatever you want to do with the money I give you, MJ, it's totally up to you. But, uh, anyway, let's get to the package thing here. The opening before this video gets too long. I really don't care how long it gets, I guess, because of the YouTube time limit and all that. It really doesn't matter. And most of my videos are about 10, 15 minutes anyway, or whatever. I mean, I got about half an hour of film I can record, so I might as well just use it as much as I can. Since I kind of owe you guys a video since, you know, my video yesterday, well, that I was going to make, kind of, was not as good as I thought it was going to be. Here, there. But it's okay, but, you know, because of people, uh, well, because, they're, you know, I was tired and everything. But anyway, uh, so yeah. So I ordered a couple things from MJ, a couple of his personal items, and yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, it sucks that you know I, I kind of agree with some of the people that said you know 